Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another Altos Trading Live Strategy Session. Jeff Tompkins, this is Richard Van Rich. Got Craig Ward in the chat. We're very excited to have you guys with us here tonight. And we've done a lot of strategy sessions in the past couple of months, but we have never done this weekly thing that we're doing right now. We're really excited to start that off, kind of like a podcast. So we're, we're excited to have you guys on. It's going to be a little looser than normal. Um, going to kind of see where it goes and uh, have a little fun with it. So let's see if you... You have to hop off for any reason. Don't worry, this is recorded and it'll be available in the members area later this evening. And we're going to post it on uh, YouTube, Facebook and all those places uh, probably tomorrow. So uh, check out that. Uh, if you have any questions about your own personal account, uh, subscriptions, anything when you're uh, account related, email support at altostrading.com. We'll answer those tomorrow. Uh, let's see here. We get to a disclaimer before I bring over Jeff. Trading securities and options falls risk. Part of buying and selling an option investor must receive a copy of characteristics and risk standardized options. Investors need a broker to trade securities and options must meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance and performance figures are based on actual trades, including real money results. Due to time critical nature of trading, broker fees and activity by their subscribers, there's no guarantee the subscribers will mirror our performance and performance numbers shown are based on trades users could enter based on the trade signals. All right, wonderful. So let me see, we bring on Jeff here. Hello guys, how are you? How are you doing, Jeff? Ah, doing well. Welcome to uh, all the Altos members out there. Great to have you guys on. Thanks for the intro, Richard. Um, Check it out guys, we have faces and everything. <laughs> yeah, this is our first, first time appearing live on one of our, uh, live on, on screen on one of our uh, sessions, so. Uh, no, first one have to wear pants. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I got my pajamas down on the bottom. So, uh, hey, Ari. Hey, Monica. Hey, Keith. Bill. Hey, good to have you guys on. Got a big big group with us tonight. Hey, Jim. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have a little fun with this tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, cover some great stuff, as always. Um, so I'll run through our agenda tonight uh, that, that we'll be uh, kind of using as a as a framework for uh, giving you guys some insight into the markets and some strategy. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, start out by looking at uh, the broader indices. We're gonna look at the S&P, the NASDAQ, uh, and we're gonna be focusing on the VIX again in the session because uh, at, at the current levels, it's uh, pretty relevant. We've seen some a significant volatility uh, as of late. So we're gonna be talking about that. Um, as always, we'll map out our levels. Um, and we're going to look at VIX correlations and signals. Um, in fact, uh, when we look at our uh, our algorithmic buy and sell signals, uh, you'll see that we had some good uh, warning of the recent sell-off, um, uh, both on the VIX and on the uh, on the indices. Um, and we'll look at the slingshot, which for you Altos members out there uh, who uh, have been with us for some time, you probably uh, familiarize yourself with the slingshot, but it's it's one of our uh, core volatility strategies um, that can help us navigate uh, market sell-offs, but also rebounds. So, uh, you know, when when the market's getting ready to uh, rebound, um, it can give us some good clues. Um, and, and we've obviously saw a big rebound today uh, that uh, started a bit yesterday, but uh, really uh, we saw a follow-through day today. Um, and we'll look at using sector analysis uh, to find opportunities in the market. Um, it becomes a bit more challenging uh, towards the end of the year as trading volume thins out. People go on holiday and, um, you know, we, we don't have quite the same market participation. Uh, so you get a little bit uh, more volatility with a, a, a tad bit less liquidity. Um, we'll wrap up with a Q&A, but as you guys know, if, and if you haven't been on one of our sessions before, uh, these are meant to be interactive. So uh, as Richard mentioned, please use the, the Q&A box for any questions, uh, anything you guys want to look at, uh, discuss, um, and uh, we, we'd be happy to, to do that for you. Um, because we do typically have a big group on with us, uh, it's difficult for us to get to every single question due to time constraints. But uh, as Richard mentioned, Craig's in the chat. Uh, and if we can't address a question live, he'll be answering that in the in the 
uh, I should say the Q and A uh, is the really the correct uh, box to enter that. Uh, and so, um, okay, looks good. So yeah, let's get over to. Um, I'm hoping that our our dashboard's updated. It, it does an update 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, typically. But let me go ahead and do a refresh here just to make sure we have today's data. Uh, hoping that it's updated at this point, but we'll take a look. <clears throat> uh, it looks like it hasn't quite updated yet. Um, take another minute or two. Yeah, it, it actually, it should do it any second here because I'm showing our last refresh, 7 p.m. Eastern. So let's give it a minute. Um, and while we're waiting on that, we can go ahead and look at uh, the S and P uh, kind of map out some levels here. Um, let's go ahead and hey Jeff. Yeah. So, so like as we do this, are you going to start like trying to find like a, a gimmicky hat, like sawzing off into some of those guys? <laughs> oh I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Nine, I'm, I'm starting out with a Nike, and next week I'll wear like a pirate hat or something. Yeah, I love it. Uh, we'll see about that one. I don't know. I I generally go hatless, but not out of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not out of the realm of possibilities. So I haven't um, had a haircut in a while. Yeah. Obviously, uh, my hair has been cut uh, very short. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too far behind you. Yeah, we go to the same barber. Uh, so let's take a look at the SP. Um, we've had a little bit of change in market structure um, with the uh, sell off that sort of ensued uh, third week of November kind of this double top that started uh, earlier in November. Uh, so there was some strong resistance up at this level. And you can see we actually got two uh, trade trend sell signals here, uh, sell warnings with follow through, um, which uh, is, is interesting. So we look at the most recent warning, the white diamond here uh, on November 22nd, we, we did get uh, a nice sell warning on the, on the day of the, uh, all-time high in the S&P. So again, November 22nd, there's follow through uh, with the trigger. Uh, so the next day's candle came down and hit the suggested entry price, um, which uh, is resulted in a, an open signal, which is actually still open if we look at the trailing stops. Um, but let's let's look at what, um, what, what our levels are. Uh, let me get my drawing tool up here um, to help us kind of navigate what's going on here. So if we look at horizontal support and resistance, uh, we've obviously got very strong uh, resistance, um, and I'll call it more of a zone than a than a, uh, a single level, because um, we we look at the we want to really pay attention on the S and P to the the half century marks would be the fifty levels, the quarter century marks would be the twenty five, um, and the uh, century marks would be the double zeros, so uh, 4,700. Um, this is kind of more of a resistance zone at 4,725 to 4,750. Um, and then if we look at it, uh, it lower support, it's similar, uh, more of a zone. Um, so uh, we've got a really strong level here at 4,550, so a half century mark. And we've got a uh, an actual uh, century mark down here at 4,500, which is where we uh, found support in this recent sell-off. Um, so you can see that we've got uh, some strong uh, areas of uh, resistance and uh, support. Okay, and um, and we want to look at it, how this coincides with other signals uh, from the trade trend algorithm. So, like we see here that we had a sell um, back there in the beginning of September. It was actually right uh, it near previous all-time highs in August and September um, and a sell uh, signal with a trigger. Uh, so that's gonna be an area of potential resistance in the future. Um, it did, uh, it, it provided a small amount of resistance here in uh, mid to late October, uh, but we broke through it pretty, pretty quickly. Um, then we get this sell signal uh, signified by the white diamond uh, in, in the, um, oh, let me see, it looks like my video went out there. Sorry about that. Um, you know, actually I, I killed you because someone said it was blocking their chart up there. Oh, okay, sorry about that. I'll go ahead and uh, take You're it good. off. 
Um, so, so then we get this uh, sell signal and a little bit of follow through here in um, early November. Um, and then a move back up into that same uh, 4725, 4750 zone. Uh, and then we get this big sell off. So there was the warning uh, right here um, on this candle. So this is the previous all time high. So you see the white diamond warning. Um, entry, if we were to take a trade from this signal, would have been just below the low of the candle. So right around the 4675 level. And uh, then we get this big sell off. Um, so this, this uh, sell, sell warning, uh, especially in the context of this double top, uh, was very strong. And then we get the sell off and we want to be looking for um, areas of support, right? So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about on our session today. Um, we see that this first level that we identified at 4550, the half century mark, uh, broke through strongly on this candle um, right here. And uh, then we get uh, a reversal right off that 4,500 level. And it's, it's not uncommon to see strong reversals off uh, these 500 levels or even a, a, a millennial mark, which would be like a 4,000 or 5,000. Um, but this is half millennia here at the 4,500 level. Um, and as soon as I refresh my dashboard and get today's candle, you can see we, we obviously uh, had a big move up in the markets today um, off this level. Um, we don't have a, a trade trend buy signal at this point, um, but uh, we can use volatility bands and previous uh, support levels to help us identify these um, reversals uh, during, you know, uh, in the context of these, these sell-offs to help us get back into the market with, with confidence um, that there's uh, a higher probability of uh, of a uh, rebound off that level, and not only that, we're gonna we're gonna use the VIX because the VIX, um, as we've demonstrated on past uh, live sessions, can give us very good indication of uh, of where um, these reversals may may occur. So let's go ahead and uh, hop on over. Is there any questions, um, Richard? We want to hit on the S and P before we look at the VIX because um, there's some really nice VIX correlation going on here with the S and P and the trade trend algo. Uh, looks like there's no questions in here so far. Um, folks are just excited to see the, the new platform and all the features in here. Okay, great. So, um, so yeah, what I want to kind of keep this reversal, uh, zone in your mind is 4,500 to 4,550. Um, but also, and let me clear these out, uh, all right there. And, um, also pay attention to, um, where this rebound sort of began. So uh, this was a, a strong bearish day on December 1st, right? Big sell-off, wide range candle, a lot of volatility, the VIX is spiking. And then the next day this, on December 2nd, we get the, uh, the reversal. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the VIX. Actually, I'm gonna refresh my, uh, my dashboard here just so we can uh, get the current day's data. Let's see if we can get that now. And then we'll take a look at the VIX. <clears throat> okay, we got it. So we are now updated for uh, December 7th. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the CBOE volatility index. Um, actually, we did get a buy signal from, or a buy warning from Trade Trend Algo today. Uh, let's see here. All right, so, uh, and also in the past, let me uh, expand the chart here. We've talked about um, looking for buy signals from the algorithm uh, below the 20 level, because that can often give us very reliable warning of a potential market sell-off. So you'll see starting here on October 26th, then again on um, November 8th, uh, that was a sell. Um, and then again on November 22nd, we got these three, strong buy warnings below the 20 level in the VIX, which is, as we've discussed in the past, kind of the, the line in the sand for determining whether we're in a volatile market or uh, there's uh, less volatility and a smoother uptrend. Um, so we get this huge VIX spike, right? So uh, it spiked way up uh, right into the 3550 level roughly um, on uh, December uh, 3rd. Um, so what happens here is 
then we need to, to determine, okay, when, when is the market uh, going to be uh, primed for a reversal back, back up? So when is it going to resume uh, the uptrend or um, retrace any sell-off that's already occurred? So uh, we see that if, we're, if we use the VIX in that analysis, we see that on December 6th, there was a sell warning from the trade trend algorithm, right? So you see that here with the, the white diamond. Um, that is going to be our indication um, that in, in, in conjunction with a reversal off a support level of the S&P that the market um, has a higher likelihood of moving back to the upside. So here in October, November, we had good warning um, ahead of time. So again, this is forward looking advanced warning before the sell-off even started and the VIX spiked. And then um, we get the sell um, after the VIX spike before the market rebounds. So see how this is not lagging. This is actually telling us uh, good forward looking information into what the, the market may do in the, in the near term. So if we look at, if we go back over, so remember on December 6th, we got that, then that was yesterday's trading day. We got the sell warning from the trade journal, the white diamond, right? Uh, we got a trigger today on this on the seventh. So if we look at the S and P again, um, we we know that the S and P made a huge move up today, um, and so how would we have used that as predictive information? Well, uh, the VIX at Trade Trend and the VIX actually gave us um, advanced warning before uh, the algo did on the actual S and P. Uh, and so if, if we look here uh, on December 6th, we started to get this rebound, right? So here's, here's a bullish candle and it's off of this support zone that we identified, right? So um, we've got this previous level of resistance that then became support when it was broken through here. Um, and then we start to see reversal off of that 45, 25 to 45, 50 zone. Um, and on this particular candle right here, if we look at that in the context of the CBOE volatility index, the VIX, we got a sell. Now, remember, the VIX is inversely correlated with the S&P. So that gives us a good, uh, reliable, forward-looking indication of a potential move back up in the S&P. And what happens today the S and P. In fact, it was it, it was uh, well. I, I think the Nasdaq was up like a little over three percent at the peak today. But um, the S and P it closed a little off its highs, but uh, ended up closing up over two percent today. So we could have used that information from yesterday to uh, take long positions or a, a long uh, on the S and P itself, um, uh, based on what the VIX told us yesterday and the trade trend algo sell signal on the VIX. Um, and uh, the algo is just a day behind on the S&P. We see we got a buy warning today. Um, so we could have actually jumped in this earlier using the VIX um, if we wanted to take a position on that signal. Um, so uh, very reliable information here um, to help us identify potential turning points in the market, especially when we use it in, context, in the context of these uh, horizontal support and resistance levels. Is that, am I explaining that well, Richard? What do you, what, how's that sound? Is there any questions I think out it's there? Not, I mean, I, I think you, you definitely nailed it. I mean, if you're looking at something that's going to like, you know, give you double confirmation, something that's forward looking, I mean, you, you have to look at it, you know, and what's great about the VIX is where you've got those two polarizing sides. When it goes really, really high, you know, it's going to go back down. When it's down there below 20, like it was, was it around 15 or 16 for a while? Yeah. I mean, this year, uh, you know, the VIX was uh, sent ever since the Corona crash has been uh, elevated until up until, you know, about this year, it's, it's actually stayed down below 20 uh, more consistently. So um, again, like if we, let me just go back over um, cause that's what we want to, we want to uh, look for if we are trying to, to time a, a market sell-off or protect our portfolio, right? So, like when we get um, when we get these all these buy warnings um, below the twenty level on the VIX, um, look at the accuracy of the warnings here because we got. Um, I mean, we can go back. Uh, let's see, go back to twenty twenty uh, beginning of twenty twenty one. 
we started getting them here early January before we got this VIX spike up into the 38 level. Um, we got it again here. Um, and, and keep in mind, these are a little bit above 20. Um, but we want to look for something near the 20 level, ideally below 20. Um, but now, uh, starting around April, the VIX finally retreated below 20. So you can see that we begin to get these um, buy warnings more frequently before these VIX spikes. Okay, so you see these here. We've had a lot of VIX spikes, uh, you know, in this year. Jeez, uh, I mean, we've got more than than the average uh, starting in, yeah. in January. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, we're like, like number ten uh, so far this year. So we're getting like an average of you know almost one a month, um, which is a lot. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so Shoba is asking, so based on the VIX signal uh, from yesterday, you would enter the S&P S S today if it moved above yesterday's high. Um, yeah, sure, but that'd be one way to play it. Uh, you could uh, look to see if there's follow through. Um, it did gap up uh, a bit today, um, but obviously it moved and closed well beyond that gap. Um, so as long as it doesn't gap too much, uh, you know, or um, more importantly, into a resistance level, uh, that's really what I'd be concerned about. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're not getting a gap in the resistance. Um, and uh, and it's certainly we had lots of room up until that resistance zone that I that I showed you guys on on the S and P. And that's the importance of mapping those uh, levels out on the S and P is you want to make sure that you're not uh, trading into a uh, a resistance level if you're going long or a support level if you're going short, because um, that's where a lot of people end up getting uh, whipsawed around. Um, trading into levels. So you can see how the VIX can help you, uh, you know, really uh, pinpoint these uh, types of turning points. Um, and and uh, sometimes, you know, they'll do better than others. Yesterday's gave us a really nice indication before a big reversal. Uh, same with this last one. Um, we got that one September 22nd. Um, and you can see after all of these VIX spikes, we're getting sell warnings. Um, some of them are a little closer to the 20 level. Um, we really want Want to get that sell warning this was a really nice uh advanced warning march 5th before uh the rebound after that that particular uh market sell-off but we want to get you know we want to get these ideally above the 20 level um and conversely we want to look for the buys below 20 uh to to go ahead and prime us for um a potential sell-off uh anytime that and let's look at the where the vix is basing because anytime the vix bases we get a higher risk of a market sell-off. So um, really right now, the, the VIX, uh, let me see, I got the wrong tool there. Um, the VIX is kind of basing around the 14 to 15 level. So again, kind of more of a zone, um, but, uh, and we'll, we'll even call it the 16, uh, 14 to 16 roughly. Um, but you can see that we're getting a lot of basing around here. So this is where um, to use like, uh, you know, sort of contrarian thinking um, where in this zone, this 14 to 16, um, where other investors and traders are typically getting complacent, greedy. Um, so if we use kind of a, a, a contrarian uh, psychological approach, we want to actually be fearful when other people are getting greedy. And that's going to happen in this low VIX zone, right? 14 to 16. And then when the VIX inevitably spikes, and there's a sell-off in the market, remember that inverse correlation, this is where other people are getting fearful and panicking and uh, taking losses, selling positions, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, running for the hills. They're, they don't know when this thing's gonna, gonna turn around, right? Um, so these are the opportunities for catching rebounds in the market after a sell-off, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, it goes up, it spikes for a couple of days, and it drops back down just as much as it came up. Yeah, volatility spikes generally don't last all that long. Um, even in, uh, you know, we can go back and look at like the, um, let's, let's we can look at like, I mean, going back, uh, my data might not be all the way loaded yet. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. But like, if you go back to the, um, you know, Corona crash, I mean, that was one of those you know steepest most severe sell-offs we've had in the history of the market um in terms of you know magnitude and period of time and uh the vix spiked up uh nearly to the 90 level that was a, a historical spike in the vix but uh it didn't last all that long i mean 
the, the, the volatility eventually gets reined in and it comes back. Um, and so that's why we want to uh, use a, a tool that gives us an edge uh, to identify these potential uh, sell-offs and rebounds. Um, and so that's where the uh, trade trend algo uh, and the zillion dashboard can really help us uh, spot these um, types of opportunities. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Um, you notice like it's like the market has been selling off steeper in the past few years than it ever has, but also recovering quicker. You know, it's like more yeah. sharp each time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, it's like the buy the dips uh, market, you know, it's just like, creating all these crazy opportunities to get in on a dip and then get back in on the rebound. And um, we just have not seen this sustained bear market yet. It's, uh, it's really nuts, but um, yeah. you know, uh, th these are the tools and, and this is what we want to uh, share with you guys in terms of um, navigating these types of market conditions. Cause uh, although they, they're never identical, you know, they don't, repeat themselves like exactly the same way every time there's a lot of similarities uh and using uh our algos with uh the vix and the s p and the nasdaq indices can really make a a big difference in helping navigate uh these types of conditions uh whether they end up being very uh quick and abrupt like we've been seeing over the last geez decade really and and uh or whether it's you know we actually go into a sustained uh a bear market. So um, let's see. I'm just kind of looking through uh, any any questions from anyone that we want to hit? Not really. I mean, there are some folks kind of asking some questions about some of the updates and we wouldn't have time to go through all of those. Maybe you can touch on just a couple of the big ones like um, like just came out today. Oh, for the dashboard? Yeah. Yeah. So we now... Okay. Uh, I, and I'm not positive, but I think we have futures now available. Um, let me see. I if we think can that changed it. today. Um, the volume has been added, I believe, in filters. Yeah. So, like, let me see if I can get NASDAQ futures up. Yeah, we do. So, we have the there futures are now loaded in. Uh, so, uh, symbology is just at and then the future symbol. So, like, NASDAQ futures is at in Q. Uh, so those are now on there. Um, let's see. I'm going to get over to my other. Um, we've got. I think, you, I think you can export in CSV now. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I got the list here. I think of some of the more recent ones. Um, we've got average volume. Uh, is that in there yet? No. So that one's coming. Um, we're going to have volume. Um, we're going to add a volume filter as well. Uh, we're going to be under the filters, but you may have to add it. I wonder. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I think that one should be loaded in here in the next few days. Um, and we're going to have the asset class filters. Um, we got the future symbols in. Yeah, so that's exciting. It's great. I, I trade futures, so... Um, in addition to equities and options. So I, I'm really happy that we got the features in uh, now into the dashboard. Um, so we can start looking at those too, which is cool. Let me see if we got the, the ES in there. Yeah, so they should, uh, most of them should be in there. Um, we'll have some scanning around that too. Um, so yeah, let's, so let's look while we're in the dashboard, the, the main dashboard, let's look at the, um, at current market conditions. So right now uh, we're at a 66% uh, uh, trend level. So uh, just still in the, somewhat of the neutral zone just because of the recent sell-off, but um, more bullish than bearish. Um, we've got a high ratio of buys to sell. So we have 83% buys from our algo versus sell. So that's quite bullish. Um, the risk level has uh, recently dropped. So uh, you can see that our, uh, our risk level is still in the mid zone uh, at 2189, but so we're by no means in a, what we'd consider a low risk market, but uh, the risk level has dropped. And of course the VIX has dropped. Um, tech was really a, a, a leader in the rebound today. So um, if we look at our top performers, uh, technology um, was, a, was at, you know, leading the list. Um, we got real estate. Um, following up number two, and then energy 
um, number three. Uh, and, and so these sector performers can, you know, if we, if we sort these and look through um, the top sector performers, they can help us hone in on, um, on some of these opportunities. So this is really where we get a bit more granular in, into looking for opportunities with single, uh, single stocks or equities or even ETFs um, outside of just the main indices. Uh, and, and we always start our sessions with that, uh, you know, that overall broader market high level overview of the indices, but those, the exercises we do on those indices should uh, really be done on individual equities as well. So mapping out support and resistance, uh, uh, levels or zones. Um, and, oh, and I wanted to show one more thing on the S&P. I got to go back um, and using volatility bands. So um, we can use those and I, I skipped over that. So let me actually get back over um, to our... Um, Let's see, we want to go to end this. I was going to say, guys, like if, if you see our screen and our and like our faces blocking part of the charts, you can drag our faces out of the way. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go ahead and, and uh, add the Bollinger's. Okay, so uh, this is also the Bollinger Bands are a great tool for um, for finding uh, support, dynamic support in the market um, at, a, at a at a horizontal support level. So what we want to look for here, um, as you can see, is uh, and, and we call this a uh, a slingshot or a volatility expansion. Is we want to look for um, a lower band on the Bollinger Bands to break. So see how that happens right here, um, where instead of price bouncing off the lower band, um, it trails down the lower band, okay? So it, it and, and simultaneously, you're gonna see the upper band diverge. So it's gonna go up. So see how we have this divergence of the upper and lower volatility bands. That tells us there, there's um, an increase in market volatility and a sell-off as price trails a lower band. So how do we use that information along with the VIX to identify uh, a support and potential reversal opportunities in the S&P? Well, we want to look for this dynamic resistance band, which is the lower band of the three, um, to line up with a static horizontal resistance. And remember when we drew the uh, horizontal resistance, um, let's get that level back up here. Um, we found that uh, right around the 4525 level um, that it coincides with the lower band. So, I mean, it's actually almost perfect. Um, let's see here. See where the band just comes down right there and touches that horizontal. It's right on the line. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like picture perfect. Um, and it's a quarter century mark, 45, 25 quarter century, right? So that is our clue along with the VIX and the, the algo, our trade trend signals um, of this potential reversal. Um, so we did get a, a gap up today um, and huge follow through, right? On the day, um, really nice, nice up move in, in the market. So one thing I, I didn't, comment on with the S&P, and, and then we'll look at the NASDAQ, is where do we find, you know, where do we look for uh, resistance now? Um, so we want to obviously, uh, if we take a long position in the market, um, be prepared to uh, take profits on, on the rebound and not get whipsawed and see those wiped out if you were to take a, a trade off the signal. So this, uh, the buy signal from the VIX yesterday, great warning. Good opportunity for today. The buy signal on the S and P um, may be a little bit late to the game because we are getting up near a uh, resistance area, right? So, um, if we look at that forty-seven twenty-five zone that we previously uh, mapped out to the forty-seven fifty, okay, we uh, we might be looking at potential. I mean, it's still got room to run. Um, we could see, and I haven't looked at the futures for, for this evening yet. Um, we could see 
a, more, a, a further move up uh, tomorrow into the 4725 or even the 4750. Uh, but if that does occur, um, whether it's tomorrow or sometime later this week or whenever, um, this would be uh, an area where we could see another reversal back down, unless we break through 4750. Then we want to wait for a confirmation of that breakout. So we want to see, you know, a, a few closes above that 4750 level and then a pullback. And ideally, a buy warning from Trade Trend on the Zillion dashboard. And those can be great opportunities to get in on a uh, resumption of the uptrend right there. So, um, then there's a lot of ways to play that, right? With options, with, uh, and, and we focus on all these different strategies in our, in our live sessions on how to play these. Um, but for, for the purposes of understanding, um, you know, the, the tools we're using, uh, the volatility analysis, um, the horizontal, as well as the dynamic support and resistance, those are really uh, crucial um, to, to get down before we move into strategy, like trading these things with options or, um, you know, trading the shares or, or uh, you know, implementing different strategies or even futures. Uh, I know we have some futures traders in our, out there in our outdoors groups. So, yeah, I think it's really smart to wait till you get that break of structure. And like one of the key things you said, and you really, you don't really hear anybody say this. And they always try to just be perfect and think as soon as you break the level to buy, to go long. But so many times, you know, it doesn't stay up there. It'll pull back quite a bit and people get stopped out or, you know, it's the fact that you get a sustained break and then, you, you know, you know, it's going to stick for a couple of days. Then you're much more inclined to see that continuation. Versus right. like a false breakout, you know? Right, right. Yeah, Monica's asking um, if the buy pending under the NQ is from the regular session or from the cash session. So, um, yeah, so this is um, this is not from the regular session. So this is uh, starting on tomorrow's candle. Uh, that's even the right. That looks a little funky to me. Hang on. Um, Couldn't have gapped up that much. Let me look here on my. Yes, it's just uh, the way that the the uh, oh, because it hasn't updated the full session. So yeah, um, this is uh, a gap in data because it's not showing the. Let's see, it should be from, that's from the sixth. Yeah, this, this candle should be, um, it should show a candle, you know, a bullish candle here in this zone. Um, let us check with our data team on that, uh, guys, before you use um, the future signals on uh, Zillion. Uh, we need to make sure the data is reporting correctly. And it could be that it's updated uh, at a different time than 7 Eastern, but it should be um, the, new, the new futures uh, rollover is uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern. Show, so it should be showing that. Let us look into that. Um, you're welcome, Monica, and, uh, and hold off on, on this. We just got the futures data loaded in, so it could be delayed data, um, but we'll need to, take, we'll need to uh, dig into that a little deeper. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the QQQ uh, for the NASDAQ. Um, it's going to be a similar picture. We did see um, a larger rebound uh, today in the NASDAQ. So we had uh, over just over 3% on the close. Uh, big move up. And it did, we did get a gap there as well. Um, but, but similar picture. So uh, we, we can see that uh, we got a bounce off of the support zone, right? Um, and then uh, we have a, a bit of a double top here. This is actually kind of more of a head and shoulders uh, pattern on the, on the NASDAQ. So we need to be a little cautious there. Um, this could be a temporary rebound. We're already up in the near resistance of 400. Um, so I would 
I, I would have used the VIX here and I would ignore the buy, the buy warning. It may not even follow through, but if it does, there's just not enough room to run in, up until the 400 resistance zone. So that's a, that's a century mark um, as well as uh, a, a static uh, horizontal resistance zone. So uh, if we look at the, uh, the pattern here, we got a left shoulder. There's the resistance from the sell-off in early November. We got the right shoulder, the sell-off that we just saw. And we got the head, um, which is the uh, high, uh, all-time high in the in the queues, right? So we get this um, this uh, head and shoulders pattern with the the neckline kind of down here around thir uh, 380. Um, so uh, this is going to be our resistance to watch out for on the queues, uh, right around 400, um, and uh, just you know today was a great opportunity to jump in, but. Uh, there's just not enough room in the resistance for me to to look at uh, an entry at this point uh, for myself on on the queues. Um, I was long the queues, I think, in my hedge fund just uh, recently, but I, I got out um, of the, of that position. So I'm uh, potentially looking for uh, a reversal off that level. Um, but if we break through, um, then we really want to be watching um, this. Uh, this high right here around uh, 407 um, from the, the previous all-time high. If we can break that, um, that could be a, a, uh, a good um, previous resistance, which would then turn into support level um, for a potential uh, long entry off of a breakout. So if we break out and then come back down, um, that level might be good for um, a potential, uh, you know, resumption of the uptrend there. But I think we're going to see uh, some significant resistance off of this level, um, off the 400 and off, you know, the 407. Um, and uh, something to just, you know, keep an eye out and, and be aware of there. So uh, let's see. Any questions uh, come through there, Richard? Yeah, let's see. Um... Ari wants to know if you take a look at the Russell. Sure. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, it, it'd be tough to see it break through that level. Yeah, it's it's just so strong, and we we double topped, you know, really on the especially on the S and P, which that's going to be difficult to break through. Um, the more times a, a price touches a level, uh, that can you know it, it makes it uh, that much stronger. Um, so let's look at the Russell. Uh, so the Russell doesn't move in quite the same unison as the uh, to the S and P and Nasdaq as those do to each other, um, and we often see more ranging on the Russell. So the and this is the IWM, the the Russell two thousand ETF, um, I think, or is this just the RUT? No, the, sorry, this is the RUT, um, the actual Russell two thousand index. Um, I generally don't trade the RUT. Um, I I uh, focus on the IWM, which is the uh, ETF that tracks the Russell 2000. Um, but we typically see a uh, more ranging, um, on the, on, on the IWM. So, um, it'll get stuck in these ranges for a long time. So it's a great, it, it can be a great, uh, uh, security use for, uh, range trading. Um, and of course ranges eventually break as we've seen happen and, um, but often return back into the range. So there's really strong, uh, support coming up here on the Russell. Uh, if we look at the uh, 2125, it's again a zone. 2125 um, is really the the uh, sort of initial or uh, su support level one, and then uh, 2100, which uh, century mark there um, is also very strong. So we've got this really strong uh, support zone uh, coming in here, and. Uh, I mean, we've, we've touched this um, almost perfectly a number of times. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and, and we didn't quite come down to that level, but we got a 2150. So uh, this is kind of an interesting zone. So, and this is why it's so important to map these. Um, if we look at uh, uh, the 2150 level, because that's a half century mark, um, we see that there's also price action uh, right around there. So with support, um, well, we hit it today, uh, or I shouldn't say today, we hit it um, uh, over the last week. 
Um, we see it here. Um, we see a bounce there. Uh, we see one there. Uh, we see a really nice one there. Um, so there's there's also uh, a level uh, 2150. So if we had mapped that out uh, prior to the reversal or I guess reversal and sell off and rebound that's just occurred, um, that gave us some really nice uh, nice warning there um, from this one. Uh, also, remember the, the volatility bands. So if we look at Bollinger Bands, um, we get a coinciding fact uh, price action hit 2150, volatility band hit 2125. Um, so that there again, and then we actually also got a buy signal. So let me, uh, a buy warning from the trade trend algo. So um, let's clear these out and zoom in on this because you'll notice that, uh, and this is really picture perfect because we have confluence of the trade trend algo buy warning, the, uh, the Bollinger Band slingshot setup and the horizontal support. Um, so uh, sorry, who, who suggested looking at the Russell Richard? Was it Ari? Uh, it was Ari, yep, it was Ari. Yeah. Thanks Ari, uh, that, that was a good one to look at. Um, I'm glad you, you uh, brought that one up because it, it, uh, it really highlights the importance of finding confluence with these, with these signals. Uh, and we can see here that we got the buy warning yesterday. So on December 6th, there's our white diamond buy warning. Our entry would be placed just above the high of the candle, a buy stop if we were gonna take a trade off the signal and we get a nice move up. Um, first level of resistance, if you were to take a trade off the signal, I would look for as the uh, breaking point of the Bollinger Band. So that's where you're gonna see it converging as we saw here to diverging as we see here. So see that little crease in the, in the, um, in the Bollinger Bands where they go from converging to diverging. That's our, our band break for the slingshot. And then if we look for a potential rebound level, that would be right around the 2280 level. So we didn't quite get up there today, uh, but we look for price to rebound up into the breaking point of the volatility band. And um, it does that with an extremely high degree of accuracy. Um, and uh, there are times when it far exceeds the, that level. So um, we may see resistance there, or if price is able to push through, we might see a move back up into the uh, upper zone of the, band, of the Bollinger Band. So that would be between the middle band and the upper band. Um, and uh, potentially even all the way up to the upper band, depending on, and th again, these are moving bands. So they're, they're dynamic, um, they're not static. They do move around, but uh, uh, that's where we'd be looking for a price to move back to. I'm not really sure what I just drew a picture of, but it kind of looks like a, a hangman game or something. <laughs> all right. Take an H. Yeah, yeah. There is a- Let's see. I got a couple of interesting questions. Um, this is from Anonymous, but it's a good question. Would you consider taking a trade on the breakout if both the Qs and the SPY broke out together? And they said there was uh, a drastic move up. You mean trading both at this, like the trading the Qs and the SPY at the same time? I didn't say that, but just make me like either one. Like if you saw confirmation that both blew through their levels, would you consider one of them? I mean, there's a lot of correlation between the two. So uh, I, I prefer to correlate the VIX to the, to the S&P for that, um, you know, that information. But um, uh, it's, it's never a bad idea to look at the, the, the indices in relation to each other. Um, but uh, typically you get more volatility in the NASDAQ stocks, the NASDAQ 100. So uh, like today, for instance, where we see, you know, the S&P uh, move up a little over 2%, where the NASDAQ moved up a little over 3 you're generally going to get uh, larger percentage increases. And of course, it's also a function of the price of the security um, and, and, you know, whether it's a weighted average or not, but uh, you're typically going to see that um, some degree of correlation there most days. So it yeah. can, yeah, if I understand the question correctly, it can, it can give us um, uh, a clue that, that perhaps uh, there's more weight behind the signal if we see the follow through or breakout uh, on both the NASDAQ and the S&P. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Uh, Layla wants to know if the red cloud on the Russell has some concern. Yeah, so um, if we look at the cl our divergence clouds in Zillion, um, let's take a, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, the clouds have given us really good indication too. We have a, a green, uh, divergence cloud, uh, as the, the, and this is, we're still looking at the, uh, Russell 2000 here. Um, is that what she wanted to look at on the Russell? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, we get the green divergence cloud here. Um, and, uh, and then a transition from green to red as the cell signal comes in. So we had nice confluence here, uh, between the, the trade trend algo buys and the divergence cloud algo. Uh, green cloud followed by red. Um, so it looks like we are still in a red cloud. Um, and uh, so the, qu the question is, does that concern me? Well, um, if I really wanted to wait this one out um, to trade back up into the upper range, I could wait for a green cloud. But I see it personally for me, uh, you know, uh, and obviously we can't, we're not giving, you know, individual investment advice here or any anything of that nature. But for me, I would, I would be comfortable uh, with the confluence I found so far with the, the VIX giving me the reversal signal back down um, yesterday and the uh, the basing of the IWM, or in this case, the RUT, the Russell 2000 index, um, at a strong support level um, and a buy signal from trade trends. For me, that's enough confluence to, uh, to ignore the, the cloud, but we're also in um, a lighter shaded red cloud now. So, um, it, it's signifying a weakening of this um, this divergence. And so we may actually see a shift into the green cloud. It just hasn't occurred uh, yet at this point. Okay. Uh, Bob has asked this question a few times. Um, in your opinion, is the VXN better than the VIX when looking at NASDAQ? Uh, yeah, so the, the NASDAQ VIX. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at that. Um, let's see. And I'm not actually sure we have that the VXN loaded in the dashboard yet. Let's take a look. We don't. Um, let me go ahead and uh, we'll need to get the VXN loaded in. Richard, will you make a note of that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. And Craig said Daniel's looking into the NQ to see if there's a hiccup on that last candle. Oh, good. Okay. Is Daniel on with us? I don't think so. Let me check the attendees. No, I messaged him separately. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Greg. Um, Greg, you sound awesome, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> I heard you're fighting a little cold there. Load up on the uh, NyQuil. That's what I'm drinking right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, you for and for the purposes of the um, analyzing the Nasdaq, we can you can use the VXN. Um, I typically uh, you know will use just the VIX and and correlate it to the S and P. But I'm really looking at uh, you know a, a a Nasdaq 100 stock. Uh, this this could potentially be a, a, a more accurate um, tool to use as it relates to the NASDAQ. Uh, but generally, uh, the, the, the VIX, the VIX, gives me enough information to uh, extrapolate to the broader indices. But uh, certainly, VXN is, is perfectly OK and appropriate to use for the NASDAQ. Awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, so looking at, looking at overall trends, um, we have uh, near term where we have sideways uh, markers on the short term trend uh, due to the volatility, um, the sell off in, in the rebound. Uh, medium long term, we're still in very strong uptrends. Um, and uh, those those do remain intact. But uh, near term, we want to be looking at those resistance zone, zones that we identified. Um, so we got about uh, what about five minutes or so left. Um, I want to go ahead and um, open up. Uh, to Q and A, um, and see if there are any uh, broader questions or anything uh, that you guys want to look at before we uh, wrap up our session for this evening. Let's see here. 
Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention we are uh, we are going to be opening up our uh, early bird release for the Zillion uh, platform that we've uh, been using on our session tonight. Um, that includes the divergence clouds um, and the trade trend algo, um, as well as uh, hundreds of indicators that are uh, available, just all of your standard indicators, your moving averages, Bollinger Bands. Um, there's uh, hundreds of indicators loaded in here um, for you guys to use. Um, and that's all going to be uh, offered on an early bird special. So we're just wrapping up our beta round. Um, we're going to be launching this to the general public uh, sometime in early 2022. Uh, and uh, prior to that, we're, we're opening it up for early bird release just to Altos members. So um, all of you on the session tonight, uh, being an Altos member can get ac early bird access to uh, the Zillion dashboard. Uh, and uh, that can all be found on zilliontree.com. And uh, we are offering 50% off the regular uh, price when we launch in early 2022. So, and you're grandfathered in by the way. So it's a good, good an opportunity to get in um, on the Zillion platform and there's so many uh, cool features to come on in this as well. Um, we have a lot of things coming like uh, statistical analysis that will help you determine uh, the best days to trade uh, a certain stock um, and uh, performance metrics. Um, uh, we just recently added futures as we looked at uh, and we're just constantly adding new uh, new features to the dashboard. So uh, a lot of exciting things to come there, but you get in, uh, an early bird special 50% off if you guys are interested in uh, zilliontree.com. Um, and uh, we don't have an actual launch date for uh, early 2022, um, but uh, once we launch, it uh, will go up to the full uh, price. So you can get more details again on, on zilliontree.com there. Yeah, speaking of zillion, I was like, Craig got a nice kudos for, from Rich in the chat. I don't know if this is Rich or uh, Craig's wife, but either way, checks in the mail. Kudos to Craig for always prompting answering my questions regarding the use of the platform. So I know Craig's been busting his butt answering a lot of the questions, doing a lot of the, I guess the whole Jillian team this whole time with the beta launch and everything. So I want to say thank you to all those guys, not just from, from Rich, but from all of us, Jeff and I, and the whole team. So thank you guys as well for all your feedback. Yeah, we got a great team behind Zillion. Um, one of the top uh, PhD computer programmers, Daniel Sinek, uh, in my opinion, in the country, he's awesome. Um, he's done a lot of programming for us. Um, and uh, he's, he's uh, the brains behind a lot of the programming for Zillion. Um, uh, but we really got a great uh, team in place that uh, is making this, not to mention our beta testers, our, our real shout out needs to go to the beta testers. I mean, they yeah. have done Seriously. so much uh, work and in, in participation helping us build this dashboard up and uh, we're really excited about it. So a couple questions in here kind of like about some of the features and some of the things with um, Zillion. So the update on statistics, they're super close to being done. Jeff's been working on it with uh, Daniel and those guys all week, really hammer out some of the last few details. So that there, sh there should be something in the near future for everybody to look at. Um, I don't know the, the exact date. Maybe Jeff knows more than me, but yeah, we're, we're just close. working. Yeah, we're working through some. Uh, it's 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 a huge challenge trying, you know, because it's going to analyze all of our algos, <clears throat> and it's it's a challenge to get it to, uh, you know, to spit out the right information and all the metrics that we're going to be looking at because it's going to give information on, um, you know, profit factor and. Uh, you know, just different metrics that uh, are important to analyzing um, a security with our algos. So it, it does take a lot of work and testing and everything, um, but it's getting clo closer and closer. Um, and that would be a really great uh, coming soon feature for, for the for the Zillion dashboard. So there's a few like questions people want to look at some tickers, maybe. Um, yeah, let's maybe take PayPal. a look at maybe one or two and then. Yeah. Okay. Shoba wants to see uh, PayPal, PYPL. Yeah. So it looks like we have a triggered buy on PayPal. Um, so let's look if it's off of a significant level. So I do see some support uh, on 
this reversal level around 180. You can see there that uh, we get the buy, came in uh, a few days ago and we've got some prior uh, support, previous resistance. Um, so, uh, and then we, we, the stock moved up a lot today. I mean, it went up 3.33% um, on the day-to-day -day off that buy signal. So today it actually triggered, it looks like it hit the suggested entry uh, right here. Uh, so this is definitely counter trend and it is in a red divergence cloud, uh, but uh, it is off of a, a support level. So it's a bit of a counter trend, uh, in my opinion, potentially lower probability trade. We may see uh, what, would, what, what you'd want to look out for here uh, is a dynamic resistance there around, uh, you know, 192, uh, where the middle band uh, let's see, sorry, 195 would be our middle band. Uh, that could make sure that's right. Yeah, that could, there, you could see some um, resistance at 195. Uh, if you see 195 break, then we could uh, potentially move back or move up into the uh, 210 level. Um, so, uh, Yeah, big. You know, this this thing's in a strong was in a strong sell off. Uh, there's some uh, nice sell signals along the way. Uh, quite a number of them, even one right up uh, here at the top. Um, but uh, really, to catch a, a rebound, you really want to make sure you're trading off of a strong support level. So it looks like there is one around 180, but uh, definitely counter trend in the context of a very strong downtrend in PayPal. All right, uh, Ari wants to see uh, AT and T ticker symbol T. Do we not have AT and T loaded yet? There it goes. Um, let's see, AT and T. Uh, so we got a buy warning yesterday, December sixth. Very counter trend again. So I'm zooming out to look for potential support. So far, not seeing any. And now we're going back to beginning of 2020. I mean, I'm just not seeing any support here. Um, so I, I don't like this for long. And this, I would be surprised if this even triggers um, the, the buy. Uh, Entry price um, is at 24. So you can see the algo gives you the, the entry price up here at the top of the chart, buy entry pending at 24. Uh, so that would be um, right around this middle band. Um, so we'd have to really break through the middle band for this um, to uh, become a triggered order. But I'd be surprised if this even comes up and hits 24. If it does, um, I'd really be looking for a break through that 24 level before I would initiate a long position on if I were going to take this signal. Uh, but to me, the higher probability signals um, are uh, the, because there is no horizontal support, right, that we could identify there going back to beginning of 2020. And generally, you know, if I can't find horizontal support in the last two years, uh, it just doesn't make sense for me. Um, but uh, what, I, what I do look for is, um, is, you know, a, a, a sell signal off of dynamic resistance. So there's one, for instance, with a nice move down, there's one, um, and then there's one. Uh, so those are gonna be my uh, higher probability uh, algo signals from trade trend where, and also in a red divergence cloud. So further confluence that, uh, you know, um, this thing's in a downtrend and we're getting sell signals off of that middle band in a red cloud. So uh, TNT is definitely, uh, gotten hammered um, and uh, until it finds, you know, real support uh, with a strong rebound, this is a short, a short for me. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for uh, all your participation. It was great to have you guys on. Um, thank you, Shoba. 
Um, and we are going to be holding these every Tuesday evening. Um, so we'll be back next Tuesday. We're going to be focusing more on our uh, Zillion dashboard um, and some of the new features and things on our next session. Um, and we'll uh, hopefully have some time to look at some strategy together uh, as well. Um, but uh, we'll be holding these every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, hope you guys can join us. Uh, we do record them and post them in the members area. So if you are an Altos member, you do get access to uh, the recordings. Um, but uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. Thanks for your participation. Um, thanks, Richard and Craig, for your help in moderating. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all on the next session. Take care, guys.